Hey everyone, this is Cody, and today I'm going to be reviewing the ZWO ASI 2600 MC Duo. This is an APS-C size sensor with a built-in guide camera, so let's go ahead and take a look at it. Now this camera has been out for a while now, but I wanted to get as much experience with it as possible before I brought you a review, just so I could share any little things that maybe aren't mentioned in the specs that I noticed with the camera. And the first thing I want to address is really kind of the critiques on the 2600 MC Duo. As with any astronomy product, when this camera first came out, there was a lot of haters and there's a lot of criticism. It kind of drives me crazy because astronomy is a very small industry compared to others. And so, you know, we should really be trying to encourage these companies to innovate and push their products forward because the technology we've seen the last few years has just been amazing. But rather than, you know, tell people they did a good job, it's always criticism that comes out first. So I'm not going to focus on those aspects today except for one. And one of the concerns a lot of people have is when you use a built-in guide camera with a main imaging sensor, when you have a narrowband filter in front, you're not going to get as much starlight into that guide sensor and your guiding wouldn't be as good. Now I'm going to tell you, you know, that could be the case if you're using a telescope at like F10 or something like that. But if you're using a fast scope like a Celestron Rasa at f2 or a fast refractor or anything like that, it shouldn't be a big issue. But you know what? With this camera, it actually doesn't matter at all. And there's one big reason for it. You don't have to use the guide camera if you don't want to. And that is what makes this camera awesome. It gives you multiple options for guiding. You can use your built-in guide camera with no off-axis guider if you'd like to. Or if you don't want to use the built-in guide camera, you don't have to. Just use your traditional guide scope and guide camera setup, and it's basically like you have a 2600 MC Pro at that point. But this camera is even better because the full well capacity on this camera is about one and a half times higher than the 2600 MC Pro. So either way, if you use the built-in guide camera or not, this is a better camera than the 2600 MC Pro. It will outperform it, and so I think ZWO did a, a great job by allowing you to use a different guide camera than what is built in. The 2600 MC Duo does have a 26 megapixel APS-C size sensor. It's the Sony IMX 571, great camera sensor. And the guide sensor is the SC2210, the same sensor that's in the ASI 220mm Mini. Now that said, if you draw a circle around both of those, you're going to get about the same area that a full frame sensor needs to be fully illuminated. So ZWO does recommend at least a 44 millimeter image circle to use both of these sensors at the same time. Now in the previous clip I mentioned using this with a Celestron F2 Rasa and how if you're using narrowband filters with faster telescopes, the guide camera picks up stars pretty easily. Well, you might say the Celestron Rasa 8 has a 22 millimeter image circle. What are you doing using this camera with that? Well, I tried it out and yeah, the, the guide sensor is massively vignetted, uh, but it kind of works. Uh, I was getting about one arc second of air average, uh, but that was actually below my imaging scale. So my stars were still pretty sharp as you can see. Uh, the Celestron 8 inch Edge HD has a 42 millimeter image circle. So just two millimeters off from that recommended 44 millimeters. And you can see here, again, using 42 millimeter uh, spacers, the vignetting on the guide camera is obvious. About half of that sensor is cut off. But even at 2000 millimeters, again, as you can see here, my guiding is pretty dang good with this guide sensor. So yeah, I would totally recommend using at least 44 millimeter image circle. But if you want to play around with it with smaller image circles, uh, I actually got some pretty decent results. So the the guide camera being built in negates the need of a separate guide scope. It saves you weight and you don't have to use an off-axis guider. So again, saving you weight. And in general, most people think off-axis guiders are a little bit trickier to set up. So you don't have to worry about that either. So really good guiding performance, even with smaller imaging circles. So pretty cool. Because of the integrated guide sensor, the camera does use the large 54 millimeter threads. Now ZWO does include the standard spacers to get you to 55 millimeters of back focus, but if you don't have a 54 millimeter filter drawer or filter wheel, uh, you may have to, to get one. Now, that said, the one advantage to using 54 millimeter threads is it provides a very stable base for your camera and telescope. When you attach your camera to your telescope with 54 millimeter threads, 
It is rock solid and it is not going anywhere. The APS-C size sensor is my favorite sensor size for astrophotography. It gives you that larger field of view than the Micro Four Thirds sensor, but it helps you avoid some of the challenges that are associated with using full frame sensors like tilt or really large file sizes. Now, it does have a 26 megapixel sensor, so you know file sizes can get a bit large, but that's more than offset by the fact that it has a 16-bit ADC, 14 stops, and a 3.76 micron pixel size. And that's the next thing I'd like to focus on, is that pixel size is really ideal if you just plan on buying one astrophotography camera and using it with multiple telescopes. 3.76 microns works pretty well with telescopes with shorter focal lengths, as well as telescopes with mid to, to longer focal lengths. If you wanna use a Newtonian from like 700 to 1000 millimeters, this works really well. If you wanna use a Schmidt Cassegrain with a really long focal length, you can simply bin the camera two by two and you get smaller file sizes and still an excellent imaging scale. With that said, just the Sony IMX 571, again, it's an excellent sensor. Noise is pretty minimal in this camera and your dark frames and light frames come out looking really clean. So overall, I think ZWO did an excellent job on the 2600 MC series of cameras. It's definitely my favorite uh, astronomy camera that I have. Now, I hope that I didn't give the impression that you can never criticize a product or anything like that. Obviously, that's not true. That kind of helps drive innovation for it as well. However, I feel like a lot of the hate that came towards this camera was a little bit unjustified. And like I said, I really like the fact that you can use the built-in guide camera if you want to. And if you don't want to, you don't have to. So if this works good on some of your telescopes, by all means, use the built-in guide camera. If it doesn't, use a separate guide scope and guide camera and you still have an excellent main imaging sensor. So I think this camera is pretty awesome and I think it's probably sold pretty well because ZWO has since released a monochrome version of this camera since it came out and a new release is coming. This is the 2600 MC Air. It's like the 2600 MC Duo and an ASI Air had a baby. It was initially released as a April Fool's joke, but I guess not everyone was fooled because uh, yeah, it's here. I've been using it the last few weeks and it's also an excellent camera, which I'll be reviewing next. So yeah, the, the Duo system seems to be working for ZWO. I like it. And again, I think the coolest part about it is you don't have to use that guide sensor if you don't want to. All right, everyone. Well, that wraps up my review of the ZWO ASI 2600 MC Duo. If you're looking to simplify your astrophotography setup, maybe shed some weight off of it, this is a great option for getting rid of your guide scope or your off-axis guider and getting excellent guiding performance. Now, if you're really looking to simplify your setup, be sure to check out my review of the up-and-coming ZWO ASI 2600 MC Air, which is a three-in-one camera. So, as always, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks so much for watching and clear skies.